I walk up those stairs at least three times a day and I'm still gaining that quarantine 15. So, um, yeah, I don't really know what to do at this point. Anyways, let's get to the point of this video. So if you're anything like how I was when I first started After Effects, you're probably a little bit too intimidated to take on the task of animating a logo. But what you have to remember is that not everything you have to make has to be the best work that you've ever done. There doesn't have to be all types of complex animation behind a logo. It can be the most simplest techniques in After Effects, but they can stay imprinted in your head. So today I'm going to show you how I animated the same logo in two different ways. The first method is really easy. If you haven't used After Effects, you're going to be able to do this. It's, it's really simple. The second method, it's a bit more advanced. I wouldn't consider it. You, you won't have to know three, four years of After Effects to know how to do this, but um, you, you do have to have a basic understanding of the program. So yeah, let's get started. <laughs> Most of the time in logo animation, the actual logo takes up a very small portion of the screen. So when someone is looking at your work, they're really gonna analyze every single detail. So you gotta make sure that every movement in there, everything that you put into it is intentional and that you want people to see it. Let's go ahead and jump into After Effects and I'll start breaking down the mechanics of both animations. I'm not gonna remake this logo step by step because each one took me about an hour and if I did that, it this would be about a two hour video. And personally for me, I have the attention span of a dog. So I wouldn't be able to even watch my own video, nonetheless edit it. So I'm just gonna break down the mechanics for both of them. And it's gonna be a brief overview of the techniques that I used in both animations. Okay, so you may be thinking, why are we an illustrator? And that's because most of the time when you're dealing with graphics, they're gonna be made in Illustrator and you don't wanna, you don't wanna receive files that are like .png, .jpeg um, because you just, you can't really animate that in After Effects. So if you can't, if you don't have the .ai file for whatever graphic you're gonna animate, make sure you can try to get that because if you can't, you're gonna be very limited to how you can animate that logo. So why is it important to prep layers? If you try to load an Illustrator project file into After Effects, After Effects is gonna kind of read it in its own way and a lot of the time it messes up the organization and a lot of things just don't come out correctly. The translation from Illustrator to After Effects isn't really as seamless as it should be. But pretty much all you wanna do is put every graphic on its own layer and you can see that if I open up each one, it's just the, the assets for that specific graphic are gonna be on its own independent layer. What I find works best is that if you just create a new layer and then from there you can drag and drop whatever asset you want on that layer. So from here, that one star, when I hit this drop down arrow, the star is on its own unique layer. And that's kind of what we want for everything. So now we're in After Effects and I'm gonna show you how to import an Illustrator file. The first thing you wanna do is come over to File, Import and hit File. And then right here is the is the graphic that we want. And where it says import as, you're gonna change it from footage to composition, retain layer sizes. And then go ahead and hit open. And then right here, you can see that it made a new composition from us. So let's go ahead and open that up. So now you can see that all the layers that we had in our Illustrator file are now nice and neatly organized in After Effects. So right here, you can see outside diamond, and then right here, outside diamond. So stem, hand, rose stem hand rows oh shoot rows the next thing that you want to do is go ahead and highlight all of these right click and go to create create shapes from vector layer so what this does is that it turns every layer that is a dot ai file into a shape layer and from there you have complete control of the animation and now you can pretty much do whatever you want so the last thing that I did was move all of these layers up. So now I have all my shape layers on top and then all the .ai files down here. And um, I'm just gonna go ahead and delete them because they're pretty much no use to me now. At this point, it's pretty much the same thing for both methods. Um, there's no, it doesn't really matter if you're doing a super complex animation or a real simple one. Um, you're gonna wanna change these vector files into shape layers so you have ultimate control. Okay, so now we're in the easier logo animation composition. The way I animated this logo was really simple and it's it's pretty much just trim paths. 
if I go ahead and show all the keyframes on here, you can see that all of them just say end, 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 end everywhere. But I thought it was gonna be a lot easier and that wasn't really the case. So like I said, I'm not really an expert in Illustrator. So when I was, when I loaded this into After Effects, I really thought that everything was a stroke, but it seemed that the whole thing was a path. So this out, outline right here, let me click on the leaf. Um, where is it? Right here. So this right here is a stroke and then the other side is a stroke and in between is a fill. And you can't really add a trim paths to this and then two keyframes, the whole thing's ready to go. So what I ended up doing is that I had to kind of trace everything on this over again. So you can see it right here. And when I play this back, let's go ahead and solo this layer. When I play it back, you can see that when I animate the trim paths right here, it starts to reveal the leaf. And so all I did is that I put this over this leaf layer right here, right under it. And then I changed the track mat to alpha mat. So what that tells After Effects is wherever this layer shows up, also reveal this layer. And when I, let me just make this one not visible. You can now see that the layer under it is being revealed at the same time as the layer above. And that's pretty much all I did for this one. When I play it back, you can just see that the whole thing is being revealed by just by staggered trim path keyframes. For this one, there's not much to it. It's just a lot of repetitive keyframe placement. Um, but one thing to keep in mind is that when you're when you are animating this and placing keyframes, is that it's best to start from the bottom and reveal from the top. It would make no sense if you revealed the top of the flower when the hand wasn't really there, or if the, all of this animated and then the border came in last. Um, you kind of want to start from back to front or bottom to top. It just it's a lot more pleasing to the eye. One last thing that I recommend for this is that you have a lot of overlapping animation. So if everything gets revealed at the same time, it's not pleasing to the eye. But here you can see that when some animation is stopping, other animation starts in other spots. And this can range from the stars to where this little branch starts to animate out. They both start animating at different times. And what this does is that it gives you, it gives your eyes just that much more to look at because so many things are happening at different times. For the text, pretty much all I did was create a text layer right here, you can see it. And what you do is that you right click on the text layer, go to create, and then create shapes from text. And then from there, that gave me this layer. And I applied the trim paths to it. And let me solo this. And I just keyframed it, easy eased this keyframe and every other keyframe in this composition. And um, I kind of just placed it where I felt like it was correct. This method right here offers you a really simple and quick way to get professional work. And depending on the client, this will be perfectly fine. All right, so now we're in the more advanced logo animation and I'm just gonna go ahead and hit play on this one. So you can see that the hand comes on the screen in this confined little diamond shape and it's already holding the rose and it has this really nice bounce back after the initial movement. And the, the bounce back is what really sells the effect for me because if it just stopped as soon as it got to the top, it would, it just wouldn't flow right. So what I did for revealing this diamond is still the same thing from the last uh, logo animation. I just traced the whole shape and then revealed it with trim paths. So there's not really much to it there. But what I did for the stars in the background, um, I used the same principles again as the same lo as the previous logo animation. Um, you just gotta remember to stagger your keyframes because overlapping animation makes it a lot more pleasing to the eye. So if you're thinking that I animated this with path animation, you're wrong. I used CC Bend It, and the reason for that is that if I would have done it with path animation, I would then have to worry about a lot of keyframes and also maintaining the size and scale of the original shape. 
the biggest mistake you can make when doing path animation is that you overstretch or shrink an object and the movement in between doesn't really flow well. I also knew that there was too many things going on at once to where if I was doing path animation, there would be a lot of room to mess up and CC using CC Bend It was just a safer option and in my opinion, it probably came out a lot better. So let's go ahead and dive into how I got the hand to move like this. And I'm gonna also solo the background and the outside diamond shape. So let's go to the first frame. So the diamond reveals and then the hand starts the hand starts to come on frame and it doesn't appear over here and that's because I have a track mat of the diamond on the hand. So here when I show the hand, you can see that there's this solid diamond right here but I don't make it visible. And I apply an alpha mat to this layer for the hand so that's why it doesn't show up on the whole outside over here. But I did apply the effect CC Bend It and that's how I achieved this that cool snapback animation. So like I said earlier, if the animation would just stop right here, it just wouldn't be as pleasing. And the way I got it to bounce back like this, and then also forward, then back a little bit again, and then finally resting, is that I used only a couple keyframes, but the main driving force for it to look a lot more realistic is, is that I used a bounce expression. And if I wouldn't have done this, I would have to manually put down a bunch of keyframes and that would have just been hours of editing with the graph editor and their position on the timeline. I would credit the real motion of this animation to this bounce expression because more than likely without it, I probably wouldn't have gotten this look. I also put in a position animation and you can see that with this little line right here. Um, let me just scrub through it. The hand, as it's coming up, it's also being moved up and that's because if I would have kept the whole thing there, when I also place this rotation keyframe, you would see the hand animate right here. I can play the animation for you without the position keyframes and you can really tell the difference. So right here, you can already see that the hand, it's its on screen right here and it just, it's not even connected so it just throws the whole thing off. But when I bring those keyframes back and I play the whole thing, it pops on screen perfectly. The rotation keyframe right here, it's pretty much doing a lot of the work in the hand movement. Um, it's it's making it's what's making this whole hand rotate like this. If I if I were to remove the keyframes, this is what it looks like. So we do get that initial that little snap movement and then the bounce back, but the whole time it's on screen. And if I were to increase the bend, just it just starts to look really weird and it, it maxes out at negative 250 and you can still see the wrist so that that rotation animation is really important in selling the total effect all of these keyframes kind of bounce off of each other and helped blend and sell the animation all together i pretty much did that to every single layer on here for the flower and hand that's all i did i i did the same thing that i did for the hand but one thing to keep in mind is that when you have CC bend it, the start and end point have to be the same on every layer. So like I said earlier, it's really important to make sure that all the details in your animation are intentional and that they're visible because like you can see when I zoom out, there's just nothing to look at over here. All the attention is on this animation. So if there's anything wrong with the movement or placement of an object, your audience will know immediately. And if you're trying to replicate real life movement, it's going to be extremely hard to sell it because if you don't do it right, people will point it out pretty quick. Um, we all know how this would look in real life, but if you're animating, a, say, a circle through some void, no one really, that doesn't exist in real life. So we don't understand how that's supposed to look. So it's, it's up to one's interpretation of that. But for this exact movement, this is something that could be replicated in real life. And some people have seen this. When you're trying to use real life movement in your animations, you gotta make sure you nail it correctly because if you don't, it's gonna be really obvious and it's gonna just, it's basically gonna ruin your idea. So that's all I have for you guys today. Please subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to drop them down in the comments below. I'll get back to you as soon as possible. But until then, keep creating, stay safe, and I'll see you guys next time.